abundant life to your children. Grant us the wisdom to learn from you and to follow your path through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here this morning. Can you believe it is uh, the first Sunday in October already, World Communion Sunday, and uh, we are uh, excited about sharing in that sacrament of communion together. And uh, as I shared last week, we are going to do it safely, and uh, we will do that at the end of our service. So we're looking forward to share in the, the sacrament with the world on World Communion Sunday. This Thursday, Betty, is that correct? Friendly Circle is having a special guest speaker, Linda Foster. And uh, we have uh, two Linda Fosters. We have our Linda Foster here, and Linda Foster, who once went here. Linda Lash. And she is going to be speaking something about World War II, correct? So, uh, 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 letters from a soldier who sent letters home during World War II. It's very historical, and it should be an interesting meeting. All are welcome. David Lash letters, okay. And what time uh, should people show up? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock on Thursday. It should be very good. Any other announcements at this time? Anything else happening? Yes, yeah, sure. them. 
And after nine weeks, after sticking to that plan, look at this report card that he brought home. All A's. He learned something very important. All A's were great, but he learned what was important was if you're going to do something that, that was worthwhile and needed a good plan. When he went on to, to high school, he joined the football team. And their football team was pretty good, but they were playing one of the best teams around. And his coach said, we need a good plan to play this other team if we're going to win. His coach said this, this team that we're up against is good. They've got one good player and he runs the ball. He's really fast. Here's our plan. They hand it off to him about every time. Everybody focus on that one player and tackle him. If we can just stop him, we have a chance. Then when we have the ball, we'll pass it to different people. We'll run it with different people so they don't even know what, what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. Well, that was a good plan because they put that plan into action. The team won 21 to 14. So coming up with a good plan is important. When we come to church, we learn God's good plan for us. And here's God's good plan. Number one, God's plan was to create the universe and create everything in the universe. Number two, He created us human beings. And the reason he created us, because God wanted us to love him, and of course he loves us. He wanted us to have a relationship with him. That's why God created us. He wanted to love us and, and us love him. The third part, whoops, the third part was to send Jesus into the world to teach us about God. And finally, God wanted to forgive us of our sins and give us life. And he did that through Jesus when he went to the cross and took our sins upon himself. So, that was God's plan. And that's why we're here in, in church. So if you have something important that you want to do, you want to come up with a plan. And maybe there's something important that you want to do right now. Whenever God calls us, to do something important. God will help us come up with that plan to get it done. If we pray, if we think about it, God will give us the steps that we need to take to get that done. But always remember this. Always remember this. God's greatest plan was to create us and love us and save us through sending Jesus the Son. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for each and every one of these kids. They're about ready to head off to Sunday school. You've got a great plan for their lives. And, and uh, they, uh, they need help making plans for all that you want them to do. So be with them. Be with their Sunday school teachers. Bless them today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, you can head on down to Sunday school. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.
faith together by stating the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this shall come the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a look at your insert in your bulletin at our prayer of this this morning. See if there be any updates. If you have anyone listed there or any additions that we can add to our prayer list. Yeah. You know, my son Scott, who have found out that he had a blood clot on his arm from the COVID, and he's on oxygen. He'll be confined to his house for four to six months. And hopefully you know, there's one more version of him if he gets that before he moves on there. So I hope and pray that he doesn't get that. And I'd like to ask for prayer for my daughter-in-law's uncle, Pastor Ray Walter Kowalski, and his family. How do you say that last name? Kowalski. Ball? Kowalski. Anyone else? Jack? Joe, uh, I didn't bring it up last week, but my great-grandson, the one that we pray for that has diabetes, was in the hospital for a week and a half. They're going to have to do heart surgery on him, but they don't know when. But he is um, doing better. So that's cold. Okay. All right. Let's come before the Lord seek him in prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this, uh, this morning and the people gathered here, and we thank you for the opportunity to worship together, to uh, lift our hearts in prayer for these people on this uh, World Communion Sunday. We believe that uh, you work with power in the lives of those that we lift up to you in prayer. We know that uh, we're not going to live forever. We know that these bodies will eventually break down and and physically will die, but spiritually will be raised up to eternal life. But while we're here, Lord, we want to ask for your healing power in our lives, in our friends' lives, and relatives' lives, in the lives of those people that we've been told about who need your healing touch in their lives. So we lift them up to you this morning and ask that you work with power through their lives. Be with all these people battling cancer. We think of uh, all these people, Lord, that are going through treatments and, and are having difficult times. Be with them and watch over them. Bob and uh, Philip. We think of Joe and, and Jackson and Tom. Mm -hmm. Be with uh, Jack's wife, Linda. Susie battling bone cancer. Continue to lift up uh, Denny and, and uh, Tammy to you and Sally. Lord, watch over uh, Kathy and Gail. We think of Gene and Sharon, Lord, all these uh, people going through uh, challenging times, he get them through their treatments. Watch over Ron and Valerie. And we think of John and, and Tom, continue to be with him. Jennifer's mom, Pat. We lift up uh, Jack to you and, and Marlene. We think of Donna, uh, young Leo, and uh, Karen. Lord, if, if these people have been through their treatments and are cancer-free, we pray that they would remain cancer-free. Those who are going through their treatments, Lord, we lift up to you and pray that they would be effective. Help them to, to recover and eliminate uh, that cancer from their lives. Lord, be with our young people, Sophia and, and Jack mentioned uh, Colton uh, in this battle against diabetes. We pray that he would get better, get stronger. Watch over these others with the health problems. We think of Ron and Lisa. We lift up Donna in gratitude. We think of uh, Peggy, who, who needs a, a touch on her vision. And, and my wife, Judy, also needs a touch uh, on her vision. Be with Nancy and, and young Luca after this heart surgery. 
We pray for these unspoken requests. Lord, you know what they are. We pray that you would work through them with great power to touch and, and heal and move and direct. Lord, we lift up Shirley Benline and her health and Randy and Kay. We think of Sue and Bill and Bob also facing health problems. Edmund, Bill Boland's recovery from his stroke. We thank you for his progress. Dawn and Doris and Patrick's dad. We pray for their healing from these health problems they're facing. Be with Marie after she recovers from this stroke and Elaine after this brain surgery. Uh, we lift up Dave order to you again. And Dana, watch over uh, Taylor and guide his life. We think of uh, Ryan going through rehab and uh, we continue to pray for Jack and, and his heart problems. We think of uh, Dorothy after the stroke and Celeste. Be with Bill and Parkinson's. Our friend Jane having health problems. Uh, Barbara, we pray for her healing. We continue to pray for Scott and complications that he's facing from COVID. We pray that he would get better. Watch over him, Lord, and, and help him to get through. Be with uh, Diana also, Lord. We lift them up and their family up to you. Watch over uh, Bruce, that and dementia. And we think of uh, Diana and Kenny Stones. Tom we just had a knee replacement. We continue to pray for his healing from this surgery. And uh, Amy, who just went through brain surgery. Lord, we lift them all up to you and pray that you move in their lives. Now, Lord, we lift uh, this church up to you and pray that you continue to move us forward. We thank you for the blessing of this children's ministry and uh, we pray that you continue to, to help it to grow and, and uh, bless it. We pray for the, the October uh, Halloween party they're going to have here in the future. Bless that to bring, bring kids our way and into this congregation and young families. We pray for the world its circumstances. We pray for our leaders and ask them to guide their lives, help them to make the right decisions. We think about our military people around the world. Watch over them, Lord, keep them safe. We thank you for their willingness to stand in the gap for us and defend our freedoms. So, Lord, we thank you for all these things, and now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we're going to put our church address up on, on the slide. The offering plate's in the back. If, uh, if you walk by, you want to drop your offering in the plate back there. If you haven't done so, you can do it at the end of the service. But for the people at home, we will put the, our address up there.
It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity to give to the work of your kingdom. We thank you for all these people and their generous hearts. Continue to pour your abundance into their lives so that they can be channels of blessings for you to others. Continue to guide us in this ministry. Help us to make the right steps, go in the right direction. Continue to bless these efforts. And I thank you for each and every person and their, uh, their hope that uh, you will continue to work with power, not only in their lives and their family lives, but the lives of this ministry and in this community. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You make him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crown him with glory and honor. You make him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. We've got a great song for you this morning. We haven't done this song too often. Probably about a year ago we did it. Hopefully most of you uh, will remember it. If, if not, we're going to sing it through a few times. It has a, a powerful message. People need the Lord. You don't have to live long in this world before you understand how much uh, that message is, is true. How much we need the Lord. Each of us are facing different challenges and, and battles. And uh, sometimes in the heat of the battle, things seem dark as we finally look up and, and we say, Lord, I, I can't handle this on my own. You're going to have to guide me. You're going to have to help me. You're going to have to get me through. And that's when God's light shines on our paths and we begin to see the things that we need to do. And God leads us along that path. So it's kind of a prayer song, uh, a prayer to the Lord for God to, to guide us. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of broken dreams, He's the ultimate Lord. People need Amen. 
an accident after accident occurred, and, and by a, a random spark, life was started, and eventually it evolved into highly intelligent human beings, and there is no intelligent force behind it all. It was like a big train wreck. It just happened. I don't see how they can have faith in that. To me, it takes more faith to be an atheist than it takes to believe in God. The psalmist insists, though, that Almighty God was this intelligent designer. God followed this divine blueprint through a step-by-step -step process. He had a specific outcome in mind, and the outcome was not only the creation of humankind for fellowship with God, to love God, and to have God love us, but also the necessary redemption of mankind in order to restore the broken fellowship resulting from human nature. God did not want to create robots. He did not want to create a robot that had no choice whether to love him or not. God wanted to create beings who had a choice of whether to love God or to turn our back and go in the, in the opposite direction. Love <coughs> requires a choice. But when, that, when God created that possibility, that choice, our human natures, of course, went the other way. And there was a necessity in God's plan for, for our redemption. And this complex blueprint unfolds word by word and chapter by chapter throughout Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. Very early in Genesis, uh, we see this plan unfolding. God creates the universe. God creates the earth and human beings. We are given the choice whether to love and obey God or not. Of course, human beings choose not to love and obey God. And, and, and sin separates us from God. But the wheels of God's redemption plan are already turning. Even back there in, in Genesis, this is what God says to the woman. God promised Eve that one day her offspring, a son, would crush that serpent's head. He said the son is going to bite, I mean the, the serpent is going to bite his heel and cause, cause injury, but the son is going to crush the serpent's head. And, and we see that as, as a victory over sin and sin's consequence of death. That's found in Genesis 3.15. And as the chapters of the Bible unfold, the world grows worse because of humankind's decision to turn away from God and not to love God. A flood that comes upon the earth and Noah and his family start again. God promises Noah, I'm not going to destroy the world again, but by a, a flood. God is going to come up with phase two in this plan. And phase two in this plan occurred when Abraham began to seek God. And God made a promise to Abraham and to Sarah that through them, through this couple, God was going to raise up a nation of people, and that nation will be God's nation. These people in this nation are going to love God and be a light to the world, and the whole world is going to be blessed through this nation. And God said to Abraham, and I'm going to put you in a land flowing with milk and honey. That's the plan. Well, through Abraham and his sons Isaac, and Jacob and Jacob's 12 sons, the nation of Israel was born. We know that there was a great famine and, and they had to move to Egypt to get food. Joseph, one of the sons, was a ruler in Egypt. Eventually, that people, the Israelites, grew more and more numerous and the Pharaoh became afraid of, uh, of them and how they might join with their enemies and he turned them into slaves. Moses came along. God said to Moses, prophet. I'm calling you to lead these people out of Egypt and through the wilderness to this land of milk and honey that uh, I promised so long ago. And then Israel moved into the promised land. They defeated their enemies and they became this great nation ruled by judges. And eventually they made a transition to a, co a government ruled by kings. Their most famous king, King David, made the capital city in Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, God 
said to David, the next phase of that plan, God promised King David that one day, one of his offspring, a son along his line, was going to be the Messiah, and this Messiah was going to be an eternal king of an eternal kingdom. So that was the next phase, the next promise in God's plan. David's son Solomon then builds the temple in Jerusalem. And it becomes the center of, of Jewish worship. And it's a very important part uh, of this plan because in that temple, the priests make sacrifices for the sins of the people so that they can love God and so that they're forgiven and they're reunited to God. And also in this temple, the prophets begin to say that this promised son of David is going to show up one day and become this great eternal king. Well, what happens next is interesting. Solomon, uh, once all these things built in Jerusalem, all these buildings built in Jerusalem, and he conscripts the people to do that, the people rebel, and eventually the nation of Israel is divided into two nations, the northern nation with their capital, uh, of Samaria and the southern nation, Judah, with their capital of Jerusalem, the people begin to turn away from God and the kings begin to turn away from God and seek the pleasures of this world and the idols of this world. And God removes his arms and hands of protection from around Israel. And nations begin to rise up and empires begin to rise up. But the empire of Assyria rises up and destroys the northern kingdom. The empire of Babylon rises up. Not only destroys the southern kingdom, but destroys Jerusalem and destroys the temple completely. Wipes it out. Burns down the city. And so after all this uh, destruction, the people who are taken into captivity say, how in the world is God going to fulfill this promise that he gave to King David that he's going to, to send a, a Messiah who's going to establish us forever, that eternal king? How's that going to happen? It's impossible. We're no longer a nation. We no longer have a city. We no longer have a temple. Well, the last part of the Old Testament, we find the major and the minor prophets. And these prophets begin to say, don't give up hope. Even though everything has been destroyed, even though we are no longer a nation, God is going to raise us back up. God is going to send us back home to our homeland. And we know what happened. The empire of Persia rose up, defeated the Babylons, and Persia said to the Israelites, you're no longer captives. You can go back to your home, land. You can go back to Jerusalem, rebuild the temple, rebuild the city. You can reestablish yourself as a nation. The prophet Jeremiah predicted that this would happen. He said to the people, don't worry. God is going to make this happen, even though right now it seems hopeless. Then the prophet Isaiah said, when that Messiah does come, remember this. He is going to be a suffering Messiah. He is going to take the punishment for us and our sins upon Himself. The lashes that they put on Him is going to heal us. And so the prophet Messiah said, this is going to be a different... The prophet Isaiah said, this is going to be a different kind of Messiah. The prophet Zechariah said, this is going to be a Messiah of peace. He is going to come riding into Jerusalem, not on a war horse, but on a donkey. Another prophet said he's going to be born in Bethlehem. And so all of these prophets begin talking uh, about this Messiah. And then we come to the end of the Old Testament. And then at this point, we go into this final phase in the New Testament. And we, we read these words. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. 
but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. Man, that is a long plan from Genesis to Revelation. And that it, it is so many events in history that, that we're trying to come to grips with and understand. You see, when, when we're drawn to the Lord at first, we are drawn by the gospel message. That message is so sweet. That gospel message is so sweet because it says, listen, we know you're a human being, we know you've fallen, we know you've committed sin, but there is forgiveness. There's open arms, there's new life for you, total forgiveness, total new life. That message is so powerful. It, it went around the world. People wanted to hear, people needed to hear that message. But as we grow as believers, we begin to understand that bigger picture. This Jesus, through whom all things were created, is the one who crushed the serpent's head and defeated sin and death. This Jesus is the one that God promised would come to King David, would be from his line, and he would be an eternal king, not a temporary king, but an eternal king. This Jesus is the one that all the prophets at the end of the Old Testament told about, all the prophecies, he fulfilled each and every one of them. As we grow spiritually, we begin to understand the wonder of it all and how the Lord Jesus, 2,000 years ago, came and fulfilled this plan, this plan for man. Amen. Let's prepare for communion. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this great plan that you have for us. And we want to grow in that understanding, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. We want to understand how all those puzzle parts fit together. We're, thank we're thankful for the gospel of grace and how it's freely offered to us through the Son. His broken body on the cross, his blood shed on the cross, taking upon himself our sins so that we can be fully forgiven and start each day anew with new life. But we want to understand more deeply. And we pray, Lord, that as we grow spiritually, we would gain that understanding through your word. Bless us now as we uh, partake in communion. Bless our, our, our time of, of quietness before you. Help us to grow spiritually. Help us to move along that path and progress along that path of your plan for our lives. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. You may come forward one by one and partake in communion. Mm -hmm. 